Happy 2014 to you all. Hello Gemini. This is an astrological forecast for 2014 and also applies if you're Gemini rising or you have a Gemini moon. Well, 2014 starts off with a bang, with a super new moon in Capricorn. And it's going to join Pluto for you, Geminis, here in your eighth house. It's a powerful moon here and it's going to trigger everything connected with your finances. It could also, however, bring you an inheritance, could bring you help from somebody else, maybe an investor, somebody, somebody wanting to help you. Um, but it also may trigger for you something deep, maybe a partnership that you've been involved with financially that you want to get out of or maybe you've been thinking of getting into something and you need to really check through things more carefully. This Pluto here as well, joining Pluto, and of course Venus is there as well, the beginning of uh, the first month of the year. So Venus could certainly bring you some money, some help, but the Pluto wants you to go very deep into your soul level, understanding your soul. Many of you who watch astrology forecasts, you're interested in the deeper understanding. Yes, I'm going to cover finances and work and all those things, but with Pluto in this eighth house, this is about getting to grips with your soul motivation. What does your soul want? What satisfies that depth of your soul? And with this um, for this new moon in Capricorn, it's going to give you an opportunity to look deeper, to go deeper inside of yourself, to go to those deeper levels. Because I know Gemini, you like to flit a little bit, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You like lots of variety, don't you? And yet with Pluto in this eighth house, it's important, especially as this year is being triggered by this powerful moon, also to take time to go deeper to take time to find out more about yourself. What makes you tick? Why, what psychologically is driving you? What is your mind telling you to do? And maybe those messages are not such good messages anymore. Maybe that new uh, moon in Capricorn here wants you to restructure your thinking. New thinking patterns that support you. Yes, thinking patterns about money especially because finances are going to be triggered this year. Many of you have been having challenges with finances. But with Jupiter here in this seventh, in this second house, sorry, of finance, for the first seven months of the year, it's there until the 17th of July, expands you, makes you expand your thinking financially. Don't think too narrow. Make sure you're thinking broader. It could also bring you some fortune financially, but also it means that the money can be going out just as quickly as it's coming in. Now, we've got Mars. The important planet this year is Mars staying in one sign and it's going to be in your fifth house. Mars here in your fifth house until the 26th of July, folks. So pretty much seven months of the year, we've got Mars, Gemini, planet Mars, in your fifth house. If ever there was a time to do something with your creative energies, the energies that make you uh, different, unique, things that are new, things that you do that are different, uh, new ideas that you come up with. It's an important time to develop those, to move forward with those. Anybody working in music, art, entertainment, it's a wonderful time to push forward, to get known, to get information about yourself out there. It's a wonderful time for pushing forward with a new business idea. Um, really pushing forward with it, taking action. If you want to get pregnant and you want a child, this certainly could um, move energies forward for you in that area. It's a wonderful time for working with children, playing, teaching, learning, um, showing other people. You may also find yourself wanting to do risky activities, taking some risks. For some of you, it may be sports. For others, it may be um, taking a risk financially, maybe in the stock market, maybe with a lottery ticket. That Mars may just push 
the financial area, because the fifth house is also the house of speculation. But I just want to caution you a little, because the vibrations are that we've got this grand cross going on, still the vibrations of that, particularly for the first seven months of this year, is going on here. So these are challenging aspects, aspects where you've really got to overcome something, to, to achieve something. And especially as this Mars is square to Jupiter, be careful that you're not in your second house of finance. Be careful that you're not overconfident, over-optimistic financially. It's important to have a dose of realism there. So, powerful months, January, April, October. And I will be putting all the dates at the end of this video, you'll see the important dates that are there for this year for you. So, April is another power month. Oh, and also to mention that Mars goes retrograde from the 1st of March until the 19th of May. So, you may reflect on how you're using your energy during that time. You may find that your energy goes there and back a little bit. You one step forward, a couple of steps back. But what that Mars retrograde wants you to do is to step back from all the busy activity that you have. Because I know Gemini's, you're very busy, always. And if you're not busy physically, your mind is busy, always. So it wants you to step back and see the higher perspective to tune into your opposite sign Sagittarius, which sees the higher perspective, and to see things more from a distance rather than close up. And then you'll be able to move forward more easily when Mars goes direct after the 19th of May. So we've got this lunar eclipse here on April the 14th and 15th here in Libra. So, um, sorry, that's um, Capricorn here in Libra, lunar eclipse here in Libra, and the solar eclipse happening in your fourth house and on April 28th, 29th, the solar eclipse happening in your 12th house, the solar one here. So we've got um, the lunar eclipse at, I'm getting confused here because I was thinking of Mercury retrogrades, which I was going to talk about, but the lunar eclipse, sorry, joining Mars here, um, again, Challenging your use of energy. What are you doing with your energy? Are you using it wisely? Are you just wasting certain time? Are you focused on what's important? Or are you just focused on too many things, Geminis? Make sure that, that, that uh, lunar eclipse will force you to focus your energy. And the solar eclipse here in your 12th house um, is going to enable you to go to a quieter space, to get information. Things coming in when you are quiet, when you are still for a short while, this solar eclipse will enable you to get information that's important, that's going to help you to solve your financial issues, to solve the work and career direction, to solve the relationship challenges. That's all gonna come and that will be triggered from that April um, eclipse. As I mentioned, Jupiter in your second house until the July 17th, and then goes into your eighth house. And I'm going to get a nicer pen. There we are. Jupiter into your third house. It's focused on the pen. And I'm glad you're not Virgos and making all these mistakes. Gemini's, you're a lot more lenient, so thank you. Um, third house, Jupiter, for the last five months of the year brilliant time for developing your social life, for getting out and about, for meeting new people, maybe traveling a bit. Could be quite a lot of short trips for you. And also a good time for social networking, social media, um, very good for anything connected with IT. And um, it just, it's an expansion of your mind. So very good for going on a course or two or three, Gemini for learning something new, or even teaching something new, sharing information. And it's wonderful for networking. So for networking, if you've got a business or you just want to connect and network and make new contacts, this Jupiter will really help you. And then, as I said, we've got a powerful, powerful time in October because we've got the eclipses. And we've got the lunar eclipse in Aries, 
joining your Uranus in your 11th house. And we've got the solar eclipse in Scorpio. Here comes the eclipse in, sorry, in Scorpio here, joining Saturn. So these are powerful eclipses. And for you, as I said, October 8th, October 23rd, um, for you, Gemini, it's the 11th house. It's going to shine a light on relationships, but particularly friendships. You might find people flitting in and out of your life. Somebody coming in and then disappearing. Or also, it's a good time as well for re-evaluating your goals, your dreams, your wishes. What is it you want for yourself for the following year? This is what will be triggered in October onwards, and it will trigger for six months after that. And also being triggered is this house of health and well-being. Now, Gemini's, we've got um, Saturn in this house of health um, until the 24th of December, so pretty much the whole year. So many of you um, have been dealing with health issues, some of you. Um, some of you have really got on a good regime, good diet, good health regime, exercise, everything like that. Many of you have done that. Um, for those of you that haven't, October 23rd could be a wake-up call with that solar eclipse to really make sure that maybe you need to tweak things a little bit, just change things, maybe do some more research um, so that your physical body is really feeling tip-top because without health, of course, there isn't much we can do really very well. And as well, it's going to shine a light on your work. Many of you have been having challenges with work, with Saturn there. I would say many of you, uh, it may be difficult to find permanent work, but if you're open to temporary or part-time or project or consulting type work, then that might be a lot easier for you to get Gemini's. Um, so we've got this grand cross going on in the heavens and the two big dates are April 21st and December 15th when we have this square from Pluto here to Uranus. So going on very strongly all year, but those are the key dates. Give or take a week or two either side. And so for you, it's, um, it's challenging your friendships. Who can you trust? Who can't you? Who's loyal? Who's not? Maybe you have to really look at that and trust your intuition and your heart. Um, as well, it's triggering finances, particularly joint finances, and anything connected with um, insurance, or, or maybe somebody's will you might need to deal with, or somebody's affairs, or somebody's resources you might be in charge of and having to deal with in some way. And it's very important that you get your taxes in order. Taxes, insurance, anything connected with authorities, it's very important that you get that in order very much this year coming. So, Gemini's, it's a powerful year for you. I think you're going to be learning a lot and you love that. Great for starting a new business, your health, you need to keep on the good work that so many of you have been doing. And relationships are not mentioned yet. Relationships, of course, do come into play. They're not the hugest focus in this annual forecast I'm giving you because there's not much getting triggered with the big planets. But believe me, during the year, I should be commenting on them. And the uh, Venus retrograde, especially for the first month of the year, will give you an opportunity to reevaluate your relationships, to reevaluate how you feel in your relationships, to take a step back and see what you're doing and see whether it's really working for you or not. So that will be the opportunity. And then if you really look at that in the first month of the year, then your relationships can flow this year. There can be some ease, there can be some more harmony in your relationships. And for those of you who are single, um, with the Mars here as well in this fifth house, great time for pursuing something romantic, um, especially for the first seven months of this year. So I wish you all a happy new year. If you'd like to have me look at your chart in more detail, I'd be delighted to do so. Thank you for subscribing, liking, sharing, commenting. I appreciate it deeply. Happy New Year to you all. Bye for now.